Now, here's, now, let's get very, very practical. Have you ever been in a situation with your partner where someone says, oh, this room is too hot? No, no, it's too cold. No, it's too hot. No, it's too cold. Now it's, and, and now you start fighting with the thermostat. You know? No, 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 we have to make it colder. It's too hot. No, no, we have to make it hotter. It's too cold. And that, that, that becomes a fight. Why? Because conflict is not just a function of disagreement. Conflict is a function of disagreement plus scarcity. What creates the conflict is not the disagreement, but the fact that there's not enough. If you're in your house and you like 18 degrees Celsius, I like 22, but I have no problem with you having 18. You can have your house any temperature you want. Now, if you and I are in the same room, and I want 22 and you want 18, now we have a problem because we can't have the two temperatures in the same room. It's that constraint that creates the conflict, not the disagreement. So this conflict between too hot or too cold is not just because people feel different, but because they are using third-person language. Okay? Notice, the room is too hot, it, third person, or the room is too cold, third person. And that, there's only one truth. It's either too hot or too cold, and that's what we're fighting. What's the, what's the deeper truth? What's the postmodern way to interpret this? What's happening here? I hope you understand my English. <laughs> so it's a little late, but... <laughs> I saw two people laughing before, so I'm guessing people understand what I'm saying. So what would, what would you say? How would you stop this conflict? I'm sorry? Good. I have my magical PowerPoint. It's exactly, exactly what you said. You shifted from third-person language to first-person language. And the moment you use first-person, you break the constraint. Because they're not a single truth for everybody. You're not making it about the room. You're making it about your experience of the room. And there's possible, and it's possible to have multiple experience experiences of the same room temperature. So we may agree that it's 20 degrees. And for you, 20 degrees is too hot. For me, 20 degrees is too cold. But the moment I say, for me, we've broken this constraint, broken the scarcity, and now we can start thinking about solutions. What are we going to do together when you feel cold and I feel hot? Now, that's, that's, a, that's a situation we can address. But we don't have to fight about the reality of the situation. What's true? Is it really hot? Is it really cold? That doesn't, doesn't take any time. It's extremely efficient in business. So if you think in business how much time gets wasted with people arguing about what's really going on. You know, this happened, no, this happened. And the truth is there is no fact there. People are talking about the future. They're making inferences. But they don't make inferences as learners. They make inferences as big-time knowers. So I was, just to give you an example, my daughter, Michelle, she was three years old, and I'm trying to instill good, ha good eating habits in her. She wanted broccoli. It's like, Michi, please, you know, try the broccoli. No, no, daddy, no, no, no. But come on, try it. What, you, you haven't tried it. No, 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 no. But why not? Why don't you, why don't you eat broccoli? And, and she says, well, you know, broccoli is yucky. And that's why I don't like it. Okay, so that, that's the logic of a three-year-old. Broccoli is yucky, therefore, I don't like it. Hmm? Now, what's the truth? This is not true. This is, this is a three -year -old. Let me put it another way. What's the 43-year-old, hopefully, the logic of a 43-year-old? Okay, I won't test you. I don't want to embarrass you with this. But it would be... I don't like it, and that's why I call it yucky. You see, the fact of the matter is this, is that I don't like it. And this is not an attribute of broccoli. That's the way I call things I don't like. See, but that's not the way a three-year-old thinks. A three-year-old naturally lives in an ontologically inverted world, where things have attributes, and it's not me seeing things. I am always right. Even, you know, no matter what I say, that's the truth. That's, that's, that's when people, that's what you think when you're three. Another example, you know, you're in a meeting, you may have thought that, and you're, you're looking at another person and say, you're an idiot. I mean, you're a complete idiot. 
Now, I've done a lot of research on idiots because I have a very large sample size around me. <laughs> and I have noticed a striking regularity, a one-to-one -one correspondence between idiots and people that disagree with me. Do you know any idiots that agree with you? Think just like you? <laughs> okay, you call them fools. So, again, you see this is, this is the three-year-old logic. You're an idiot, that's the true. That's why you disagree with me. But what's the 43-year logic? Is you disagree with me, and that's why I call you an idiot. But the moment the game is revealed, you can't play it anymore. Now, when I teach this in companies, people say, what do you mean, there are no idiots? Of course, there are no idiots. But what, you say this guy is intelligent? I don't know if he's intelligent. I'm just saying there are no idiots. But that's not because they're intelligent. It's that there's no idiot people and there's no intelligent people. There are people I call idiots because I don't like what they say. And there are people I call intelligent because I like what they say. But when I call someone intelligent, that doesn't mean they are intelligent. Generally, it means they agree with me. Or I like what they say and I, I agree with them. But there's no such thing as an idiot. There's no such thing as an intelligent person. There are only opinions about other people based on the mental model I'm comparing them with. That is a shock. I cannot tell you the shock that there is. And people start talking, well, are you being a learner now? So it, really in meetings, that's, that's what I meant about the meme. People start using this language and say, well, are we being knowers or learners here? Are we asking the customer what they want? Or are we telling the customer that they're idiots and we know better than them what they want? I mean, this is real from product development meetings. People start using this. It's, it's, a, it's a little phrase. And you say, you know, from an academic standpoint, it's like, oh, okay, I mean, what? This, is, this, is, this is stupid. It's like, well, yes, it's stupid. But that's the way people start imitating one another and using this language to make pretty big differences in the way they run their companies. So there's a just to give you a, a, a little more background so it's not so trivial. There's a fabulous, I, I think a very revealing uh, experiment Jean Piaget used to do. And Piaget would take a cube and a three-year-old. And the cube was, let's say, red on one side, blue on the other side. And he would have the child play with the cube. And then he would sit across the table from the child and would ask the child, what color are you seeing? And the child would say red. So the red part was facing the child. And then comes, now comes the difficult question. And the question is, what color do you think I am seeing? And the three-year-olds always said red. Because the three-year-old does not have the capacity to take another person's perspective. For the three-year-old, if I see red, the world is red. And if you don't see red, you're an idiot. <laughs> Just like my daughter when I said, but Mishi, I like broccoli. And she laughed and said, but daddy, you're an idiot. No, she said, Daddy, but you like yucky things, you know, something's wrong with you. That's exactly what she said, you, you like yucky things, you know, something's wrong, because broccoli is yucky, if you like it, something's wrong with you. See, when you're three, you don't have the capacity to adopt another person's perspective. So, when you're three, this is cute. When you're 43, that's very dangerous. Unfortunately, most 43-year-olds are 3-year-olds with 40 years of experience. <laughs> and, you know, that is, that is a major problem in organizations. You have 3-year-olds with a lot of experience walking around and saying, you're an idiot, this is the way, you know, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, and, and, and fighting really like 3-year-olds to see who gets the toy. Now, that, that, that's... That is not a trivial thing to grow out. It, this, is, this is the evolution, cognitive development of a human being to be able to understand the multiplicity of perspectives and incorporate another perspective. We can't do that alone. So unfortunately, when we grow, out, we grow up, our parents don't know how to do it either. So most of us learn that as adults in organizations. And that's why the leaders are so important. If you have a leader that can do this, I can teach you and demonstrate and show you how it is done your life will be dramatically different than if you don't.